determine budget. So this is uh, the process of aggregating the estimated cost uh, of individual activities or work packages to establish an authorized cost baseline. When I hear this word, I want to show you cost baseline so that we are very clear what it is. And then I'll, uh, so I'm going to show it. It is in on uh, next slide and then we'll come back and, you know, talk about determined budget because All right. This is the S curve uh, that I was talking about. Okay. This is the S curve. Okay. Uh, and this is BAC. This line is your BAC. So, as I said, cost baseline is time phase approved project cost baseline or budgeted actual cost. Okay. So, uh, in here, as you see, uh, what we'll have, we'll have different funding requirement at different point in time. So, this is, this, this is the way we are uh, you know that this point in time we'll be releasing this kind, these many funds pro, for the project. So uh, the the funding requirements are different. So uh, it is not done uh, very uh, I mean uh, from S curve perspective, but it is the, done usually in steps. And these are the steps that we are seeing for uh, funding. So this is the place. This is the point in which we do the funding for the project. For example, okay. So, and this is the cumulative value of that fund. Okay. Uh, now, uh, <coughs> essentially, this is the uh, the budget, right? Your BAC. This is the final value, actually. Okay. That will say your budgeted actual cost. <coughs> this uh, budgeted actu actual cost uh, is the uh, value which is highest uh, or rather from project perspective it is a budget that is there for your project uh, considering your uh, cost baseline. So cost baseline will have budgeted actual cost as the highest point. Okay. Then comes your <coughs> so budgeted actual cost will consist of your contingency reserves. So we talk about contingency reserves so those contingency reserves will be there for budgeted actual cost, right? So when I talk about cost baseline, it consists of contingency reserve in terms of cost and uh, that's about it. So this is the S curve. Whenever I say cost baseline, you should always imagine S curve. That's all. Okay. So it is time phase approved project budget. Now, uh, when I say uh, uh, project budget, then we, uh, I add <laughs> management reserve to uh, budgeted actual cost and I get this project budget. So, essentially project budget equal to BAC plus ma management reserve. Okay. So, BAC plus MR. Okay, so that's about it. Uh, I wanted to tell you from uh, cost baseline perspective. Now we'll go back uh, from where we started. Determine budget slide. Okay, all right. So <coughs> the process of aggregating the estimated cost. I think this is very straightforward. <laughs> we can use simple tool, tool like cost aggregation which will just aggregate all the individual activity related cost and uh, or work packages to establish an authorized cost baseline. Okay. So, uh, in here I would like to show you one more slide which is again graphical in nature. So, so, so this is the way again this, uh, this also talks about your contingency reserve and management reserve. So, reserve analysis is the tool and technique we use. So first we need to understand uh, what are the uh, 
you consider this at this level okay so activity cost estimate will be here okay this is activity cost estimate plus activity contingency reserve so these activity cost estimate will be related to your uh, acti uh, activity contingency reserve uh, rather other way around these contingency reserve will be uh, related to the activity uh, that you are going to perform so every activity may have activity con contingency reserve okay uh, when you add up all the activity related to work package you get work package cost estimates so let's say work package has four activities you add up all the activity uh, cost estimate and activity contingency reserve okay which is uh, uh, cost buffer in a way you get work package cost estimate <coughs> then you will have at work package level you may have contingency reserve and when uh, you add all the work packages and their related contingency reserve you get control account level uh, essentially uh, uh, control account level uh, so one work package plus one contingency reserve you get one control account related cost uh, likewise you have multiple work packages and uh, one control account may have multiple work packages uh, so together which will have uh, one control account so these multiple control accounts added together together will give you your cost baseline so once you get the cost baseline uh, you add the uh, management reserve to that to arrive at your project budget <laughs> so always remember cost baseline is not a project budget uh, there is a relation between project budget uh, so uh, cost baseline is equal to budgeted actual cost BAC okay which you will be using in the uh, examples that you, when we solve the examples even, even in, uh, you know you will get even better idea so BAC plus your management reserve you will get a project budget so this is another uh, slide I wanted to cover before you know uh, I talk anything on those that slide all right so <coughs> going back so what we have here we have the process of aggregating the so we saw now how we are aggregating so why I went back was cost aggregation was in effect you saw how aggregation is performed which is simple straightforward process to arrive at your cost performance baseline or cost the way we call it cost baseline simple which is essentially authorized time phase project budget <coughs> Then uh, looking at inputs, uh, okay, all the inputs are covered, tools and techniques are covered, so we'll cover at appropriate, so we'll, uh, the important output, your cost uh, base, performance, uh, cost baseline is the important out output. These are the tools and techniques, cost aggregation, reserve analysis, etc. By now we, sh we are uh, pretty familiar with, rest we'll discuss at appropriate slide. The main uh, input for this uh, determined budget is uh, always is activity cost estimate so which will be aggregated to work package level work package to control account control account to uh, essentially uh, your cost basing okay so that's let's see uh, it one by one uh, in subsequent slides so activity cost estimate it is activities within each work package is aggregated to arrive at the estimate for each work package so this we already aware of this becomes input basis of estimate developed during the cost estimating phase project scope baseline to review and incorporate uh, incorporate why we need it incorporate funding constraint if at all available in the charter and which gets documented in the project scope statement into the cost budget so you can see the long list of so essentially why we are uh, project scope baseline uh, scope baseline has uh, three factors project scope statement WBS and WBS uh, dictionary so scope statement also is uh, we compared with charter also project charter also 
and it has uh, funding constraints that may be coming directly from the customer or uh, management as appropriate and that will be used for uh, from project scope baseline while determining the budget. So if budget goes above that constraint, you know that you know you have to do some adjustment and if it is not within your uh, constraint then uh, you call appropriate stakeholder meeting and you know, adjust uh, the uh, work packages and activities or essentially the features that we are going to deliver the, to the customer, the way customer understand. <coughs> then coming to project schedule, this is used to aggregate cost for the period when the specific activity would be performed. So this is, since it is a time phased uh, uh, budget, right, uh, we need to uh, have the project schedule also as an input. Resource calendar, availability, basically resource calendar has uh, availability or no, no availability of the resources for the, your project uh, and uh, in that also <coughs> the, if there are shifts these are the two information we look for. Then uh, contract information related to what product or service needs to be uh, produced is obtained from the contract or any other legal uh, requirements towards budget, uh, funding constraint you may have uh, or uh, you know put in the contract also. So those become input. The reserve analysis, <coughs> so reserve analysis is both for known unknowns as well as unknown unknown. Reserve analysis is both contingency reserve as well as management reserve. Contingency reserve is known unknown management reserve is unknown, unknown, simple straightforward which we have seen yesterday, we today also we saw. Then <coughs> funding cost aggregation, the cost estimates of activities are aggregated to work package level and then up to the project. I think uh, this is simple straightforward, you are just rolling up all the costs from activity level to uh, control account level uh, to arrive at to your uh, total project uh, co cost. <coughs> so limit re reconciliation, this is expenditure towards the projects are reviewed against the limit set by the customer periodically. So uh, re limit reconciliation is a, another tools and technique to ensure that you know we are not uh, uh, exceeding the limit set by the customer. Then we have cost performance baseline. Uh, cost performance baseline is a uh, I I will say cost baseline as per the PM of edition 5, it's a cost baseline. It is a time phase budget used for monitoring and controlling the project cost performance. So when I actually start spending, I am going to uh, compare it against your cost baseline which is part of your project management plan also. Then uh, out, another output is project funding requirements. So these are funding requirements from step to step, I mean uh, when you are uh, releasing what kind of funds uh, towards uh, the project. So funding requirement for a duration are derived from cost baseline which is S curve and a margin is added for overruns and early progress etc. <coughs> project document updates if any for budgeting activity, approach chain requests, impacts the cost management plan then changes, these changes are incorporated into cost management. 